not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex. And I'm the founder, along with my wife, who's here with me today in the studio, Amanda, of the Tree of Life family of churches. Together we run a family of nine churches. We're about to plant our tenth as well. But we're here today to talk to you about something absolutely wonderful from the Word of God. And it's called redemption. Redemption is one of my favorite words. And redemption means to buy back something that's lost. And the truth is that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he paid the price for us to be redeemed, that we were no longer lost, but now found. And we can now be with Jesus and know Jesus. Now, my primary function in the body of Christ is a pastor and a teacher. And so I will often teach Christians about redemption. They've been born again, they've been saved, but they had no idea what happened when they got saved. I'm explaining to them what happened after the event. But my wife, Amanda, she's an evangelist, and she likes explaining it to people before they're saved. She likes finding people who are not Christians, who are atheists, who are Muslims, who are Hindus, who are all sorts of things that just don't know God, they don't know Jesus, they don't know His love, and she tells them the story of redemption. So I thought I'd bring her on here today, and this will encourage you no matter who you are, no matter what your background is, it'll encourage you. This story is such a beautiful story, it's straight out of the Bible, and the way she tells it is beautiful. So Amanda, thank you for mm. coming down and being in the studio today. It's good to have you here. It's great to be with you. And uh, so tell us about redemption. Tell us about what you're going to say. Well, um, you're going to start in the book of Genesis, I bet. Yeah, I'm going to go straight to the book of Genesis. And if you go to Genesis 1 and um, 26, it says, um, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And just that thought process that we're actually made in the image of God, aren't we? I mean, that's amazing in itself. God made human beings to be like him to have the image of him. That's, he's a three-part being. He's Father, He's Son, and He's Holy Ghost. And we're not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, are we? <laughs> no, but we, we do have three parts to us. Um, we have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Mm. And this is Adam that he's talking to here. And you know, when, when he was talking to Adam, he wanted him to know the perfect identity so that we've always got that perfect identity imprinted into us. But we, if we don't know God, if we don't have a, an a, encounter with him, it's like there's a missing bit of us. And I always um, explain to people that that bit of you is that you're, you're not, you've not got a living spirit. You've not got a spirit that's alive. And why have you not got a spirit that's alive? Um, it's because of, of the fact that Adam was, you know, he, he, he died the minute that he ate of that fruit. If you look at the word, um, it, it shows you that he died. I mean, you talk about that quite a bit, don't you? Um, um, yeah, so um, the, Hebrew. The, the Hebrew actually says, when God warns Adam about eating that fruit, he says, if you eat that fr forbidden fruit, a lot of people think it's an apple, but the Bible just calls it a fruit. Yeah. If you eat that forbidden fruit, in dying, you will die. That's what God says, in dying you will die. A lot of translations say, today you will die, because that's implied in the way the verb set up. It's going to happen immediately. Now, Adam ate that forbidden fruit, and then he lived another 930 oh, years. I know, it's amazing. So does that make God a liar? Because no. God said, you're going to die today. No, we have to look at the Bible a bit closer than that. And um, what the Bible teaches is that man is a free part being. Like you just said, spirit, soul, body. Yeah. Every human being is a spirit being. We are spirit beings on earth. We're not earth beings, we're spirit beings. 
We have a soul, that's how we process information, that's how we think, that's how we have preferences. That's why I like better music than you do. And, you know, we have a soul, we have a way of thinking. And then we have a body, that's what we look like on the outside. Now, what's, what, what, what I'm thinking of right now is when I teach that to Christians, to born-again, spirit-filled Christians, sometimes there's resistance to that, to spirit, soul, and body. Even though 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, holy, spirit, soul, and body. Even though Hebrews 4 verse 12 says that the word of God can actually divide spirit and soul. Some people actually think the spirit and soul are the same thing. They're not. They're two different things. Your spirit is how you contact God, and your soul is how you contact yourself and how you contact other humans. You know? And so if I'm, I'm speaking to you right now, we're, we're, we're talking soul to soul. I'm talking with my mind and my emotions and making decisions, and you're listening with your mind and your emotions. But when God speaks, God doesn't speak like this. God speaks straight to our spirit. Mm. So I know that, and I teach that to Christians. But you're talking about someone you've just met on the street, and you're doing evangelism. How do they respond to that? Do people accept that, every or do they reject time, it? Every single time they accept it. Every time. I, I, don't, I don't see a person not accepting that and they can really see that that they have uh, uh, emotions that you know part of their soul is their emotions their thinking their decisions all these kinds of things are, are wrapped up in their uh, in their soul and they can see that and um, I think you know what the inside inside every person eternity has been placed mm. so they know that there's there's a, a spiritual awakening that, that they have they, I mean in other words what you're saying is that everyone's aware mm -hmm. that something deeper than their thinking and their emotions is actually a deeper part of them yeah that's powerful yeah so, I mean, yesterday I was uh, speaking to a, a lady, um, Tori, her name was, and she'd never heard anything about Jesus other than um, small things that she'd been taught in RA. It just amazes me it's that someone can reach amazing. adulthood in the United Kingdom mm. and never hear anything about Jesus. It really does. Mm. So uh, what she knew was uh, that he was the son of God, um, but she didn't know uh, that he'd risen from the dead, for example. She didn't know that. I mean, we have such an amazing story to tell. We have an amazing story to tell about Jesus. And um, I was just explaining to her, do you know that, that he came born of a virgin? And, you know, he's God, so he can't come born of a virgin. You know, people do question that sometimes. They do question, well, how can you... Um, believe that, that, that somebody could be born of a virgin. Well, this is God we're talking about. This is man um, who, you know, Jesus became flesh dwelt among us. But, you know, going back to the thought process of, of how we're, we're made in his image, and we've got that three part. Uh, this lady, Tori, yesterday said, you are describing me when you say that there is a, a void within me, when you say that there's a hole within me, there's something missing. And, you know, w when we think about what happened with Adam, Adam, um, he, he didn't die straight away, like you said, but what happened to him was that his spirit man died. And from that point onwards, every person who's been born, every human being who's been born, has been born with like a non-living spirit, that spirit that needs to be made alive. And the minute that we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord, the minute that we become born again, our spirit is made alive. The spiritual man is made alive. And we can commune with God in spirit. You know, in John it tells us that we worship him mm. in spirit and in truth. How can we worship a God if our spirit isn't alive. Yeah. And what's so important with that as well is that most people that you speak to, even Christians sadly, mm. they think that their problem is behavior. Yeah. Right? They think everything wrong is behavior. Why, 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 why is this person, uh, you know, why, why is God and this person have a broken relationship? Well, because they behave badly, they lie, they steal, they break the Ten Commandments, they're not good, they don't go to church, they're this, they're that. It's all about behavior. And so then people try and change their behavior they make their New Year's resolutions, and I'm going to be good, and I'm not going to be nasty, and I'm going to be kind, and I'm not going to do this, I'm going to do that. And it doesn't change their life, because their heart hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. The problem, every human being's problem, is not behavior. It's birth. You were born in the wrong family. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not disrespecting your parents. You were born in Adam's family. You were born a human being. And the only way out of that mess, because Adam was dead spiritually, disconnected from God, you were born disconnected from God because you were born in a family that was disconnected from God, the only way out of that is to be born again. So your problem is birth, therefore the solution is not behavior. The solution to a birth problem is birth, getting born again. 
That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you know, Nicodemus behaved really well. He was a really good man. Mm -hmm. Never stopped behaving. Well, better behave than nearly 99% of people watching this right now. Better behave than me, better behave than you. Mm -hmm. He was a very well behaved man. But his problem wasn't his behavior. His okay. problem was he was born in Adam's race and he needed to be born again. So Jesus said to him, you must be born again. Mm. And so how do people respond when they, when they sort of realize that? Well, this, this lady yesterday and um, her, her partner, Reese, um, Reese and Tori, they just were absorbing it. They were loving what I was being said to them. They were really receiving it well. And, um, and I, I just explained to them, you know, you just, you just, to have that first connection with God, you have to allow him in. And um, I spent a lot of time just telling people, just allow Jesus in, allow him into your life and let him from the inside out make you alive and let him connect with you because that's all he's after. He's after that connection and that relationship. And as relationship um, grows, people begin to understand Jesus. They begin to understand who God is and that they'll want to follow him. They'll want to um, do what he says. They'll want to deny things that have, um, uh, you know, that there are problems in their life in terms of they want to let those problems go and give them over to God and, and just allow him into every area of their lives. How many times have we had someone come to the church mm -hmm. and say, I couldn't possibly be a Christian because I couldn't give up doing my drugs. Mm -hmm. Let's say that they're doing drugs or I couldn't give up sleeping around or I couldn't give up this, I couldn't give up swearing, I couldn't give up this behavior. And we say, you don't have to give up that to become a Christian. Because it's not a behavior problem, it's a birth problem. You just need to be born again. We've prayed with them. Mm -hmm. And then it's not weeks, months later, they've gone, oh, I've stopped using drugs. I've stopped yeah. sleeping around. I've changed. I'm nicer to people. Um, this is my wife. She wants to become a Christian now because I've changed so much. This is my brother. He wants to become a Christian now. I've changed so much. And because the problem was never behavior, the problem was birth. And when you get the new birth, mm -hmm. then as you say, our behavior starts to change. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's really a... a I see, I keep hearing you, what you're saying, I'm thinking it's a believing problem, mm. isn't it? It's a believing problem, as believing what God wants us to believe, isn't it? And he wants people to have faith. You know, he wants it, the Son of Man to find faith when, when he comes on the earth. And you know, how can people know unless we tell them? And so, like with, with Tori and, and Reese yesterday, just explaining that Jesus died on the cross for them that he did, he was buried, that he did rise again from the dead, that he took their sin, became their sin. Explain this well, sin, people really don't understand what sin is in this, in this nation. And you're just breaking it down, explaining that it's selfishness, explaining that it's um, putting yourself above, of God, above God, you know, putting your own thoughts above God. Um, just ha adding the word selfishness really helps people. Um, break down sin, but I, I love the way that, that you kind of help people understand sin. You help people understand what, what sin is. Well, s sin in the Greek, and you know, I've done my masters in Greek and everything, it's an archery term. Mm -hmm. It comes from archery. And so sin means to miss the bullseye. And here's how it is, you know, no, no one who's ever gonna do archery, I've never done archery in my life, but you know, if you're gonna do archery, you're gonna aim at the bullseye. You're not gonna try and hit somewhere else, are you? You're gonna aim for that bullseye, you're gonna pull back your bow, you're gonna aim for that. And that's how most people are. They're trying the hardest to live a good life, but they know they didn't make it. They try the hardest to be nice, and they haven't been, and they try the hardest to be clean, and they haven't been. Most people who come to me who are doing something that's really messed up, you know, that they're addicted to pornography, or they're involved in a relationship they shouldn't be, or something, they don't want to do it. They just have no power to be free. They're trying the hardest to hit the mark, but they're failing. And that's how most people describe their life. And so we tell them that because so you, 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 you're leaning on your strength. No human strong enough to beat that. That The strength comes from understanding how much God loves us mm -hmm. and letting his power work in us. Like you say, inviting him in. Now I know there's a lot of people watching this. You need to know Jesus. You need to know his love. But I believe there's also some people watching this right now. And you just listen to my wife talk and you think, man, I want to be able to share his love with people. I want to be able to tell people. Now, obviously, you're a pastor. You run the Tree of Life family with me. You're full-time ministry. You're paid to be in ministry. Um, so the, the, this couple you're talking about, they must have phoned you up and said, you're a minister, you're a pastor, we want you to tell us about Jesus. That's how you must have met them. For me, no, it's always people, if they're before me, if you're standing before me, there's a reason why you are. <laughs> and, I, and so I was going out to the car to put something back in the car um, that we didn't need in the church. And uh, this couple were just standing by the car. 
And I thought, I'll just, I'll just go over and talk to them about Jesus. And, you know, how will people know unless, unless we share? How will people understand who he is unless we're willing to actually speak out about him? And I think the church nowadays, they're, they're, they're desiring to talk about Jesus. And, you know, I've had the Holy Ghost speak into my spirit many, many times talk about Jesus, go and talk about Jesus. So, you know, with this, with this couple, they really were willing to receive Jesus. So they prayed with me to receive him as their Lord. And then I, I said, I really want to give you a John's gospel. Um, but they're back in the church. Um, and if you, if you can, you can come into church. And they were actually in a hurry. It's very strange, they were in a hurry, but they stood there and they waited for five minutes. And I went in, I got John's gospel. Um, I write a little like note about who I am and how to contact me, gave it to them. And, and then um, Tori was asking me, can, you, um, can God do something about my job? And so, we, we just ended up praying for, I ended up praying with her um, for her job situation. But you know, God cares about absolutely everything. Yeah, absolutely. He knew what was going on in their life. He knew that they're in the, the right place at the right time. And we have that saying, don't we, that we're in the right place at the right time. We, yeah, we make declare that, that yeah, all the time. Often. I'm always yeah. in the right place at the right yeah. time, amen. Yeah. So it just, it's about speaking to the people that are around us. Um, we don't have to speak to thousands. There are people who are designed to speak to thousands. Um, and you know, in this broadcast, we're definitely gonna be speaking to thousands yeah, yeah. of people. But it, it's important to even reach the one person. Yeah. Reach there's people the watching this program right now that you've got people in your colleges, you've got people in your office, you've got people in your family, people who live next door to you. They will never watch this program, mm -hmm. ever. There's just no way they're gonna watch it. They're never gonna sit down and watch Christian TV but they'll listen to you tell them about your faith. They'll listen to you tell them about how Jesus loves them. And we need to be bolder. We need to step out and start sharing with people. Like Amanda says, people want to know God. They want to know Jesus. There's something inside them. And if we step out and tell them, you'll find out God is there every step of the way. And it's great. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like we were in Watford, weren't we, on Saturday night? And one of the ladies there during the lockdown, um, she'd given her life to Jesus and she started going to church. She's gone through a discipleship course that we run with a beautiful couple, John and Emily. And, um, you know, Anna has had a, like, a dramatic change in her life since she's yeah. been born again. And her mum had come to church. And so uh, when I was sitting talking to her mum, uh, she said, I can see such a difference in Anna's life over the last two years, well, since she's become born again. And I know it's because she's become born again. I, I mean, like, that is such a t living testimony, isn't it? It's a testimony. I, I mean, <laughs> and people want to reach out. I mean, before lockdown, we had an evangelism conference every year, about September time. We normally had Riley Stevenson come over from Texas. Mm -hmm. And Riley is very gifted. He's like you, you know, he goes out there one-on-one -on -one and just is so good at just persuading people to believe in Jesus. And I spoke to our pastors about it, and I said, if I got Riley again, who would want him to come and speak in their church? And I thought maybe one or two of the other churches would. No, everyone wants him to come. Everybody wants him to come because there's so many people in so many of our churches. Every time you go to one of our churches, people want you to take them out on the streets and share your faith with people because people just want to know how to do that. It is so simple, it really is. And it is Riley that taught me anything. And, and the fact that Jesus, you know, just a, a love for sharing Jesus. I've always had a love for sharing Jesus. But sometimes I've thought in the past, I don't know how to. Uh, maybe I've given a tract out. And you know, if you're at that point where you, you all you feel you, is that you could give a tract out or a John's Gospel, there's no harm in that. You know, John's gospel has made a massive difference in the world, hasn't it? So why can't we give out tools? Why can't we give out things that will help people yeah. come to the kingdom? Have a read of this and tell me what you think yeah, of it. Exactly. You know, and every little bit just turns the tide a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's where we need to be. We need to think and pray and ask the Lord, what's the little bit I can do? What's the bit I can do to reach people with this wonderful message of redemption? Now, obviously, if you're watching this and you're not redeemed, you don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Maybe you're watching this, you believe in God. You know, you're watching Christian TV, but the honest answer is you feel like God's so far away when you pray. 
He's not inside you. You can change that in a second. And so I'm going to hand over to my wife because she's better at this than me and uh, ask her to just pray with you that you would come to know Jesus right now. Wow. Um, like, ben, like Pastor Ben has just said, you know, if you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, now is the time to do that. So I just ask you to bow your head in prayer and um, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly thank Father, you for sending Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. That he died on a cross for my sin. He died on a cross for my sin. That he rose again from the dead on the he third day. rose again from the dead on the third day. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to come into my life. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. And I choose you to be my Lord. I choose you to be my Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. That you love me. That you love me. You accept me. You accept me. And you've forgiven me. And you've forgiven me. And I thank you that you'll never leave me. I thank you that you'll never leave me. I promise to read my Bible. I promise to read my Bible. And to pray. And to pray. And find a good church. And find a good church. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You, so if, I was going to say that we always, always leave it with people reading the Bible mm. and praying and talking to God and then trying to find a good church. It's important to bring people into that discipleship. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And if you've prayed that prayer for the first time and you've accepted Jesus into your life for the first time, then let us know. Okay, we can get literature to you and we're not going to charge you. We're not here to make money. We want to bless you. We can get books to you. We can get stuff to you. We can get you to join a small group on Zoom or on WhatsApp. We can give you as much help as you want or as little help as you want. But if you've been born again today, we want to celebrate that. We want to rejoice with you. We want to just um, help you in any way we can. So send me an email, ben at tree.church. I can't make my email any easier. If you want to email Amanda, just use the same email address, ben at tree.church. But just put for Amanda on it and I'll make sure she gets it. Okay, Bennettree.church. We want to bless you and help you and encourage you in your new walk of faith because we want you to grow and develop. Watch this program every week and listen to the good teaching. Pray, read your Bible, and get involved in the good church. If you don't know a good church, contact us. We might be able to find one local to you because we really want you to be in community. Life is easier when we've got people around us who can help us and love us and bless us and so on. And that's the truth. That is absolutely the truth. And so, you see, what's happened is when Adam died, his spirit died instantly, and eventually his body died. What's happened to you today, if you've prayed that prayer, is your spirit has come alive instantly. You're not born again. You've got all the life of God inside you. Now, you'll start to grow in your mind and start to understand that and start to realize that, but one day your body's going to be totally transformed, and you're going to get a brand new body, and we're going to live together with Jesus and every other Christian in heaven and on the new earth. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. So you have a bright, wonderful future ahead of you. You can also call us as well uh, right now if you want to pray that prayer with one of our TV angels. They will gladly pray with you and stand with you. Or maybe you need healing in your body. Maybe you want to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Our team will pray with you, believe with you, and you know we, we want to the best for you. Okay, So give us a call today. The angels are waiting for your call. Now, last week I mentioned our summer conference. You might have seen the adverts for it as well. But I just want to ask my wife quickly to plug our summer conference because why is it going to change our life this summer? Why is Heal the Nations going to be something so special? Well, we've invited four amazing teachers and um, pastors as well. Some of them are pastors. So we've got Tony Cook coming, and you'll enjoy his teaching. He's, he's just such a clear teacher of the Word of God. And uh, what topic is it that he'll be doing? Uh, the, whole, the whole theme of the conference is the resurrection life of Jesus. Yeah. Paul said in Philippians 3, I want to know him, the fellowship of his sufferings and the power of his resurrection. And that's what we're going to teach on, how, how much resurrection life we have inside us as Christians. So we've also got Greg Moore too. Oh, uh, he's an amazing friend of ours and a, a mentor to us. And he, he'll be teaching on the, the miraculous, won't he? Yeah. And um, he's just so able when it comes to teaching on how flowing in the gifts of the Spirit mm. uh, in a church setting and in a um, um, public setting as well. And then we've also got Marie Helene, who's a wonderful pastor in the south of France, uh, who's been uh, planting churches around France. She is going to be teaching on prayer. Yeah. She always holds a wonderful prayer conference every year. So she'll be um, teaching on prayer and encouraging you in your prayer life. And then we've got Pastor 
Robert Marswak coming too, and um, a wonderful Ben as well. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be doing at least one session. <laughs> uh, but the seminars, there's going to be seminars on leadership, seminars on the gifts of the Spirit, seminars on prayer. There's going to be stuff for the children, stuff for the youth. It's going to be such a powerful conference. And it's in Guildford in Surrey this year. We've moved it slightly. I've got a wonderful, um, we're in a hotel. We've got a 500 seat auditorium there. And we're going to be so, so blessed. So get yourself signed up for that. Be with us first week of August. It's going to change your life forever and ever. Listen, it's been awesome to be with you this week. Uh, do tune in next week. But between now and next week, let's believe together that good things are going to happen to you. Amen. God's a good God. Romans 8 and verse 31 says he's on your side. That means he's for you, not against you. And so start to believe that God is for you. The link below there, tree.church slash dream partner, is if you believe in our dream and you believe in what we're doing, you want to help us get on TV all over the world. We're currently looking at a contract to go on uh, Uganda and Tanzania. If you want to help us invest in that, then go to tree.church slash dream partner. If you want to pray for us every day, go to tree.church slash dream partner. We pray for all our partners every day and we believe for God's best for you. We pray for our viewers too. We believe that God is going to impact your life and lift you to high levels. And why wouldn't he? He's on your side. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Have an awesome week. Good things are going to happen to you this week. I really believe it. And if you want to find out where we are, then go to tree.church slash locations. We have uh, nine locations at the moment, nine churches at the moment. We've also got some other locations like Bristol. And we're about to start in Scotland as well for the first time uh, where we're starting new churches. We're going to be having a meeting once a month or twice a month in some of these new locations, getting ready to start church. And if, you don't, if you're not part of a local church, we'd love for you to join us. We'd love to help you join what we're doing because it is absolutely wonderful. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God.